So now we're going to start by taking a tour through a bunch of different types of isomers, going by tougher and tougher versions of what it means to be isomers. We start with the constitutional or structural isomer. Now, isomers, by definition, are two structures with the same molecular formula, but difference in bond connectivity or three-dimensional space occupation. We start with the constitutional, also known as structural isomer, as they differ in their bond connectivity. Now, you're going to see me talking about organic molecules like you're building something with Lego a lot as you work through this section. So I want you to think about a constitutional isomer as if you've been handed two Ziploc baggies with different Lego pieces in them. And the constitutional isomer is as if you've just assembled them in different ways. So you could have a lot of different versions. I've got some examples shown below. Now you'll notice here that we can have versions with just hydrocarbons with C6H14 being shown a variety of ways. What changes here really is branching. And as you'll remember from our section on intermolecular forces, branching can affect things like melting point and boiling point. Importantly in organic chemistry, as we start to introduce heteroatoms, we can also affect the type of functional groups present. Here we have a ketone, here we have an aldehyde, and here we have an ether. All of these have the same molecular formula. All of them contain a single oxygen atom, and yet they are all different functional groups. And this is entirely because of constitutional or structural isomerism. Now there's one last important connection with constitutional isomers to spectroscopy called the hydrogen deficiency index. Let's take a look. So the hydrogen deficiency index or the index of hydrogen deficiency, sometimes called double bond equivalence or DBE. Unfortunately, there's about four different ways to name this. All of it is connected to a calculation to determine how many degrees of unsaturation are in a molecule. Remember that unsaturation is multiple bonds or rings. A degree of unsaturation can be a double bond, which uses up one, a triple bond, which uses up two, or a ring, which uses up one. A saturated alkene has a general formula of CnH2n plus two, where n here is going to be an integer. If this is not the molecular formula, that's gonna mean that we have an element of unsaturation. Now the good news is it's a pretty quick calculation in order to work this out. To calculate this, we use this index of hydrogen deficiency calculation, where you have two times the number of carbons plus two plus the number of nitrogens minus the number of hydrogens minus the number of halogens. Remembering that X here means a halogen, where the halogens are fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. All of this is divided by the number two here. So two times carbon plus two plus nitrogens minus hydrogens minus halogens. You'll notice that oxygen does not factor into this formula. Watch out for that trap. That's a really common mistake students will wanna make. When you're drawing a molecule then, you wanna be able to assess the index of hydrogen deficiency to determine what degrees of unsaturation you have. Should you be incorporating a double bond or a ring? Should you be thinking about triple bonds? And then you want to draw all the possible chain lengths and look at branching sites. With constitutional isomers, you can end up with a lot of versions of the same molecule. A really good self-check is to always come back and double check your degrees of unsaturation or your hydrogen deficiency index to see whether or not you're following the right structure. So constitutional isomers are our first type of isomer, and they are those which have the same molecular formula but different bond connectivity. We also introduced the concept of the hydrogen deficiency index and the calculation for it. So here we're being asked to identify constitutional isomers. Now the first thing to check when we're looking for isomers is we want to ensure that we have the same molecular formula. If we don't, then we don't have isomers at all, regardless of what type. 
Then for constitutional isomers, what we're looking for is we're looking for different bond connectivity. So we're looking for the molecules to be assembled in a different way. Now there's two things that I look for when looking for constitutional isomers. I look for different branching in carbon chains and I look for the presence of different functional groups. For example, an aldehyde versus a ketone. So we'll use these tips as we work through things. We're gonna start by checking the two molecules to see if they have the same molecular formula. I'm gonna start with this Newman projection here. I'll highlight this carbon at the front in red and this carbon in the back in green. Now the carbon in red has three methyl groups, the carbon in green in the back has two hydrogens and an ethyl group. I have a grand total of seven carbons and I have 16 hydrogen atoms. I come here to the other structure and I label a red carbon and a green carbon. I've done this intentionally with the color coding because you'll note that both red carbons have three methyl groups. So this allows me to keep track of everything. I'm then able to count the number of carbons again, C7 and H16. So we have the potential for isomers because we have the same molecular formula. This is good. Now we're going to work through this to see if we have different bond connectivities. And you'll probably see pretty quickly that we do. On the green carbon, we have this ethyl group. But on the green carbon in the other structure, I have two methyl groups, which means that structurally, these are indeed different. So these are constitutional isomers because they have different bond connectivities. And that different bond connectivity is a result of different branching in the carbon chain. Let's look at the next set of examples and we'll do the same activity. Let's start by counting the number of carbons. I have one, two, three, four, five in the first structure. I look for the number of oxygens. I have two, and I'll count the number of hydrogens. One, two, three, four, plus six for 10. So C5, O2, H10. Let's do the same next door. I'll count the number of carbons. One, two, three, four, five, C5, two oxygen atoms, and I'll count the number of hydrogens. One, two, four, plus six is 10. So wonderful. We also have the potential for isomers here because we have the same molecular formula. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compare the two different structures. And again, you're probably noticing something. Then in the first structure, we have an aldehyde. And in the second structure, we have a ketone. Now because we have different functional groups, we must have different bond connectivity, which means that again, these are also constitutional isomers. And that's it. You count the number of atoms to make sure isomers are even in play. Then once you're done that, you check for different branching in the carbon chain. You look for different functional groups. And with both of these examples, we see that we have constitutional isomers. Want more bite-sized lessons? Check out the WISE free trial at wiseprep.com. Oh, and subscribe to our YouTube channel while you're here.